I want to thank the West Hisbury Library for having me this evening. I think that is fabulous. It's a great venue. And I want to thank you all for coming because I know, as an empath or a sensitive, it is not easy to come out into a crowd, into public spaces. And so tonight's about you. Tonight's about your care and well-being. So if you, I said that if you wanted to bring a paper and pen for notes, you can. We are recording tonight, and mostly this is just to help people via my website. I'll put on a link to it so that people that can't be here tonight might, that might find it helpful will be able to look at it. And you can visit it back at a later date once we have it up. So um, empaths and sensitives are near and dear to my heart and uh, for various reasons. And I'm thrilled that finally the world has come to recognize that this is, uh, a, a, in essence, a group of people that are on the planet right now. So in many ways, I have to laugh. You are like God's little vacuum cleaners. I hate to say it, but you who are empaths and sensitive, you, are, you collect the negative emotion around you and in a room quite often. And so often, you're the one that everybody goes to to spill their guts, to spill all their worries. And you listen and you listen, and you often soak it up. But I want to remind you tonight that part of being the vacuum cleaner is emptying the bag. <laughs> so this is really about remembering when are you overwhelmed. So I want to start with a few things, and then I'll get into some other bits. And the one thing I just want to make sure I remember tonight is to remind you this little acronym, ABC. Kind of, I didn't make it up. Spirit gave it to me. Um, awareness, breath and ABC, and care. And with awareness is, I want you to notice as an empath or a sensitive when you're feeling a little frazzled. Awareness to feeling frazzled. Breath, taking a minute to just kind of <sighs> calm yourself. And care, noticing what do you need to do to uh, correct matters or help yourself. There are some tricks that I want to teach you tonight, but I want to talk to you about, um, in case some of you aren't aware, the definition of empaths and sensitives. Empaths, they're, they're real in regards to, this is a word that's come across uh, recently. I've mentioned it in my book, uh, Some Dogs Talk, because Tony, the protagonist, is a, a budding in a psychic communicator with animals specifically. And in the book, you could actually take those skills and use them for any being. And so he, two of the things that he uses as empath connect, empathic connection, and also what I called, I termed it myself because there was no terminology out for it, shared sensory experience. As an empath or a sensitive, sometimes people say, oh my gosh, you're so emotional, or you can, you know, things hit your heart and you're, you're just, you can be overly emotional. But the thing is, I don't want to use that word overly emotional. Oftentimes in life when you were little, you were able to sense what people's emotions were and you were able to sense kind of the feelings of the room like, oh, now's not a good time to talk to mom and dad about that. You could sense it from them and oftentimes it was this, wait, am, is it me that I'm feeling this agitation or is it them? I, for one, there was a certain family member <laughs> that I could never sit really next to at the, at the table, the dinner table, because literally my body would be split. Part of me was relaxed, but sitting next to this family member on the other half, it was agitation. I mean, I picked up the stress, like, Phew. it wasn't until years later that I started doing this work that I realized, oh, that's what this is about. This is what's been going on. So I actually commend you for coming. I hope you, I don't know if you believe in multiple lives, but I'm going to make reference to that on a, a few occasions. I commend you for coming to the planet now because we need you, because you are people of the heart. You feel everything and it, everything bothers you. But sometimes what you do for protection is you shut it down. So I am here to encourage you to open it up because people like you, you wise, heartfelt people, are the teachers in essence. Not only are you healers, amazing healers, energy flowing through you, moving energy in a room. I don't know if you've uh, played around with that or messed with that in your life. Like you might be compelled to stand near someone and all of a sudden, just your being near them helps them. You don't have to say or listen. It's just you're around them and, or they gravitate to you. So I commend you for being here because it's a life of service. It really is. But I also commend you for being here because it doesn't make it easy. I tell you that you, it's as if you're from this planet of harmony or from another realm. 
And we are so blessed to have you here because this is not an easy life. This can be stressful and overwhelming and you don't understand how people can't get their act together. Why can't they be kind? Where you naturally come from is a state of harmony. And so you're like orderers. You like really want to have things ordered. And you sometimes you can, because the energy flows through you, when you empathically pick up other people's energy, you have to learn to take care of yourself differently, even small children. These are the kids that sometimes are anxious. They can't sit still. You know, but these are the people that are adults now that we're told to sit still, sit up straight, don't, you know, just do as I tell you. And this, you were the kind of kid that needed to go, I need to run, I need to move. And also I need to know where I can hide out and where's a safe place. The library is perfect. It's quiet as long as you can have your little space. This is one of the reasons why we set the chairs up like this tonight because before we've stacked the chairs, but that's overwhelming. That can be really overwhelming for you. I have a young person that I know in my life who's fabulous. She is uh, an empath, wicked sensitive. You can use those words interchangeable in my world. And um, she knows. She's like, I'm selectively social. I said, that's brilliant. You need to be selectively social. You need to know who you can't sit by. You know, this person knows when they're in class, it's a younger person. They know that they need to sit in the way back of the room, in the way far corner, because otherwise they're picking up everybody's stuff. A lot of times, kids at a very young age, they, they, they come home agitated from school and they don't realize it's because they're sitting next to the abused child. I mean, I hate to be that drastic, but that's how it is sometimes. So I really want your takeaway from this is that accurate, accurate, ac Acronym, help, help. <laughs> Acronym, awareness, breath, and care. It's like noticing because oftentimes, um, raise your hand. I mean, I know this applies to you. You don't have to raise your hand. I'll raise my hand. It applies to me. I'm a great lever, man. I'll leave my body. I'll like, you know, so this is about you staying, staying on the planet and being here. Why? Because you're amazing heart people. So when things bother you, this is about you responding from your heart, not reacting through your gut, because I'm sure some of you might even have, you know, sensitive issues, even emotional. Like, so that ends up happening around what, I, what is your third chakra. It's self-esteem. It happens around your stomach. It drives you a little nuts. So this is about moving. Instead of being reacting to an emotional situation, hey, come on in and have a seat. So instead of reacting from an emotional situation to move it up to your heart and respond. Because you remember I said you're teachers, you're of the heart. This is about you taking a minute, taking a breath and going, wait a minute, my true nature, you talking, my true nature is love and kindness. That's who you are. And so it's about moving to your heart to say, how am I going to respond here? How, how with love am I going to respond in this situation? Because <laughs> I'm going to see this. You're really wise. You're really wise, and says so some of you, I'm gonna, this is gonna sound so bad, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. Some of you are in situations, ooh, I'm gonna move around the room. So I'm gonna move around the room and I might give uh, little psychic impressions. And if you're not interested, cross your arms. So other, I'm not gonna go personal. I, it, I won't go personal because I'll stop them, I'll, they'll edit me. But what I'm saying is, is I might come near you if this uh, resonates with you. Fair enough, fair enough, because now I've given you permission to say, back off. Um, so, and I was where? So, uh, <laughs> so, so the situation is that sometimes you just have to remember, um, oh, right, thank you, that when you're in situations with people that really aren't getting you, because sometimes you're like, oh my God, are they daft? These are not your words, but they are your words. Are they daft? And, and this is where I raise up to your higher conscious and go, no, they're just lost or they're just, they just don't get it because they're not able to see things. But you, empath sensitives, see the huge picture. So you are often visionaries and you see things from a broader perspective and you can take the emotional and um, mental essence of a space and suss it up to a fare thee well. And so you go in with a lot more information than they do. So sometimes it's not that they're daft, they just don't see as open as, uh, and clearly as you do. I know you get this. I'm not even going to say, can I get an amen? Do you hear me? So I'm going to show you this. I, when you first came in, 
I love you too. When you first came in, I kept looking in your eyes. There was only one set of eyes I didn't get into, but I got it now. So here's the deal. I didn't get your eyes either. I can see your eyes from here that it was it. OK, so this is great fun. There's two things that happen. Empaths, um, OK, so please help me remember mirror neurons. OK, I'm going to hold that. Empaths and sensitives usually have, in the biology of the iris, little white flecks in their iris. So you can turn to the person next to you or turn to a person next to you and see the white flecks in their eyes. You all have it. Not everybody has white flecks in their eyes. And you'll see like little white, white flecks. You will. It's there. It's a sure sign. Yeah, yeah. It's a, sure, it's a sure sign You're, you are from the planet of harmony. So you've come, if you, yeah, trust me on this. Go home when you look in the mirror. So you've come, in essence, if we can use that you know, kind of analogy that you've come from another place, you've come to teach harmony here. This is why we don't want you reactionary. So the biggest thing for you in regards to self-care is knowing when your feathers are being ruffled and how do you, you know, it, on that little paper that I said I want everybody to read before you go, it's like, uh, what are the last two things? It's, uh, yeah, choose wisely and choose joy. You know, this is not supposed to be, this is hard. This is a hard life for you guys here because it's overwhelming. And so this is about being a joyful life. So it's about what do you need to do to take care of yourself here? Welcome to planet Earth. Put your backpack on and get all your tools out. And one of them is staying in your body because otherwise you're like, ooh, I'm out of here. So um, I'm getting to the mirror neurons. So we're great on leaving our bodies. I'm zoning out, I'm going out. The other thing, I hate to say it because you feel so much, you feel so much, we have a tendency to gravitate or to self-medicate. Uh, Thank you. So that can be alcohol, it could be drugs, it could be food, that's my drug of choice, chocolate. So we have to watch that. And so I'm not saying you have to stop, but I'm saying notice, and go, whoa, what's going on here? Write that down, emotion. What's going on here? What are you, what are you, what's the emotion? Is it fear? Is it anger? Is it frustration? Is it because that person doesn't get me? So it's like, wait a minute, what do I need to do to express myself clearly so that they get it? And I have to express it with love. Because otherwise, we can be incredibly crippled and we can get so depressed because it's not easy. You know, it's not easy. Sometimes we were shamed. Sometimes we were um, not walking near anyone on that one. Sometimes we were discredited, way too much discredited. We like knew a lot more. And so sometimes when that ruffled someone else's feathers, an adult's feathers, they would squish us down. And so we learned to shut up and put up. Or we do that in relationship. And so. I just want you to take that in. If it resonates with you, there are some people I'm tuning into, but I'm not walking up to because that would be, that's their stuff. And this is a small island. So um, if you get that, then you get that. You're also great at psychometry. This is a psychic thing where if you hold something, you could like tune in and say, the, whoever owns this, this is what this person is all about, blah, blah, blah. You feel energy from even things, from things. So these are fun things to kind of mess with and play with and see like, so big deal. Well. Some people can't have other people's furniture in their home because of that. So one thing I do want to talk about, though, is mirror neurons. Here's the deal. It's a biological thing. Look it up. Google it. Whatever you want to do. And it's when someone is, let's do, I like the word pissy. I'm from the Midwest, so we use the word pissy sometimes. So if someone's pissy, and then next thing you know, I become pissy, and then now I'm pissy, and that's like, I don't want to be pissy. Or they're a whiner, and I have enough I could whine about because it's hard to be here, but now I'm a whiner, and I'm a whiner, and they're a whiner, and it's all of the sudden happening. You're hanging around depressing people, so you're becoming more depressed. So this is about you saying, Whew, from this moment forward, from February 25th onward, I might have to change some friends. I might have to change some relationships, or I might have to reapply myself in those relationships so that I can set solid boundaries to make things change. because. You talking, I need to care for myself differently because I am a vulnerable, unique human being, far more than others. 
not everybody, but a lot. You guys are wicked. Your auric fields are usually out far. So it's probably hard to sit in some of those chairs because you're like, ooh, I feel so squished. Um, and so it's learning your energy balance and your emotional balance and really helpful stuff. Nature, walking out in nature, taking time each day. And it's also where do you sit in the movie theater? Where do you sit at the table? Where do you sit when you're with friends? You know, there's some people <laughs> Like, they'll come at me, and I'll, like, literally move a chair in front of me to be like, hey, how's it going? I'm, you know, I'm not going to hug them. I didn't hug you as you were walking in just because I was doing some energy stuff. So, but on the way out, I'll totally hug you. But you just have to know that in those set moments, you transmute energy. You're picking up energy. So some of you are, if you're not, you're, you'd be great healers. But also, conversely, you would be great to get healing work, whether it's Reiki, acupuncture, cranial sacral, anything energy related, because you're sensitive. So like deep tissue stuff might be overwhelming for you. Go for it if it feels right for you. Go for it. Self-care if you're like, oh yeah, get all those knots out. So remember about the backpack, it's your tools in there. I don't want you to carry other people's shit around. Sorry, I have to say that. My mom hates when I say that. You have to, I don't want you to carry other people's shit. So you have to sort out who's, what's your stuff, what's my stuff. I mean, you're great processors if you keep your feet on the ground and stay focused on your emotions. But sometimes you, we, we negate our emotions to just be, to make it so that others can have peaceful, happy lifetimes. So everything's happy, so I'll just make sure everything's happy and I'll, I'll uh, not let myself uh, be heard or I won't speak my truth because then I won't make waves. Well, spirit's going, you were here to make waves. You were here to show them, you're here to show them how it's done. So here's the deal too. Sometimes, I remember I was the psychic at a, at a big party, which I'll never do again, but it was a news anchor woman's husband that I went up to and I said, wow, you shouldn't watch the news. Same is true, I know, right? It was, <laughs> I still got paid for the gig. So this is, <laughs> this is about, this is the same for you. And I'm not telling, you know this, you know this. Not all of you can watch the news, it's overwhelming. It's too, it's, you care, you care deeply. I'm not gonna say you care too much because you care deeply and you wish people gave a damn. Sorry, mom. You wish people gave a damn as much as you did, because if they did, the world would be in a much nicer place. So things that bother you, news, any, anything that's, uh, you know, when people are dishonest, although sometimes you can be dishonest because you're trying to, like, how do I fit in here? But things like, um, you know, all the ills of the world on animals, on people, you're humanitarians. And so sometimes, because that can be overwhelming in the tricky world that we live in now, you may have a tendency to pull back and either self-medicate or not think I can do anything, but I want you to remember that you're healers. This is important for you to know. You have healing hands. Whether you've studied anything, any modality or not, you are healers. So even putting your hands on a map of the U.S. or a globe of the world makes a difference. Or even if you are like, I'm going to pick one cause and help, you're, or, or I'm going to write one letter and speak through your heart. You have come to change. I'm going to say this and you're going to be like, oh, stop, Con. You've come to change the world. You really have. People like you have come to change the world because you know so much. You know so much. You're connected. Okay, do you get what I'm saying? Yes. Thank God. Thank God. So look up mirror neurons. You'll laugh. But it'll change your biology, so don't, don't hang out. You, and also, too, you can tend to... Camp shorts. Um, <laughs> you can, uh, um, you know, you can tend to be a whiner too. So it's hard, but I want you to change. I want you to stop that. I, <laughs> right? I do. I want you to stop that. Why? And how are you going to do that? How am I going to do that? Awareness, breath, and care. Instead of whining or complaining about someone, you are going. <laughs> I love that you got that. You're going to take a breath and go. How can this be different? I'm not going to complain. I'm going to go up to them and say, hey, I've been meaning to talk to you about this, and it might come off bad, but I'm going to try my darndest to be, come from kindness, blah, 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 blah. Then you're not whining anymore, or you're just simply not hanging out with them, because sometimes you just can't. So this is your new best friend. I almost wore an apron tonight to this talk, which I thought would be fun, but I didn't. 
wear an apron, but I did bring the vinegar. I discovered this by fluke. And if you were at one of my other talks when I mentioned this, I apologize for the repeat information, but it's really good. So I do work. I do energy work, body work, psychic reads, all this stuff, mediumship, channeling. And sometimes <clears throat> when I leave a place, I get slimed. I get like, I'm picking up energy from all over or the person and I'm like, whoa, what the heck is going on? I've got the energy in my auric field. Usually when I work on people, I shift it off and send it up to the angels. I'm gonna touch on the angels a little later. But sometimes if I'm not paying attention and I get it in my auric field, spirits, I was like, whoa, I just feel slimy in my auric field. And spirit said, get out the vinegar. I'm like, what? And so the vinegar is, they said, take a little vinegar, pour it in your hand. So I poured it in my hand and then go like this. And then I went like this with the vinegar. And just like it does windows, it totally clean, cleaned my auric field. Amazing. Those of you that do healing work, you're going to love this. It's wild. It's what you get. <laughs> it's wild. It really is. It's just wild. So that came from spirit. I told my girlfriend in Australia who does the same work. She tried it. She's like, this is amazing. I said, I know, right? So easy. So um, I love moments of silence. Maybe we just need a little moment of silence break. It's true for you all. Some people are different. You have to find your groove. Some empaths and sensitives really... Uh, their zone out is music, loud music in their ears or silence or dancing. Dancing shifts off energy, moving through the woods, walking through the woods, dancing, dancing, dancing. You know, your little saviors, oh, I'll be a savior of the world. You, you take on other people's pain. I mean, you're actually supposed to, but you're supposed to move it through you and off it goes. I send it off to the angels. I'm like, take this, take this. Your energy transformers, energy conductors. Tai Chi would be interesting to you because it would be real and you probably see the energy move. I don't know Tai Chi. I've probably done it in other lifetimes, but um, not this one. So mostly it's, it's recognizing when you're feeling that overwhelm and that anxiety. And don't do your regular go-to that might be self-harming in a long-term way. Mirror, mirror, eating constant. <laughs> or, but instead go, what do I need to do to really take care of me on a different way? What am, I, what am I panicking about? What's the anxiousness about? You would also make for a great psychic, <laughs> seriously, because you can really read other people's emotions. You can actually sometimes read their thoughts, if not often, um, because you're like, okay, how did they get there with their thought? And an empath can go in the train of thought to how they figured that out. So you're great problem solvers. Um, so you can go, not only do you pick it up emotionally, but you can pick it up intellectually how they got there. With shared sensory experience in the book, um, what Tony goes through is, a, is some experiences that I went through where I literally, it doesn't even, the person doesn't even have to be in the room, where I go into their essence and I, and I could be this animal or human tree, pff, no, no holds, you know, nothing, nothing, there's no whatever, water, <laughs> but uh, humans, let's say human, where I go into the human and I have, I experience what they're experiencing in the moment that they're experiencing it. I did this, I, I threw this example out before, I'll do it again. Um, my son, I couldn't find him. We were in Oak Bluffs. My dad turned to me and said, well, look through his eyes. So I immediately was like, oh, okay, thanks, dad. Looked, I went, closed my eyes, looked through my son's eyes, and I was like, oh my God, he's in the game room. He's playing a, a driving game. Because I was literally, my son, playing the driving game. And so we went right upstairs and there he was. So um, you have to watch this when you do this kind of stuff. I think sometimes you um, might do it uh, just happenstance, some of you, where you wonder, how's my sister? And then you think and you can feel, or you can also make a phone call that way. Sister, call me, call me, call me. And then they'll call, or brother, call me, call me. And they'll call because you're connecting to them even at a distance. For you, prayers work. I know where I was going, angels. Uh, the angels work wholeheartedly with you. So if you don't believe in them, sorry, this doesn't apply to you, but it actually does. Um, angelic light can uh, works with people of harmony because they work on that same vibration. So when you're in a tough 
space, definitely call. I need help, angels. I need the angels to surround me with the light. They um, help shift your auric field even because they're energy. Everything is made up of energy, but angelic light of pure energy is pure grace, and they can really come in in amazing healing sessions with you. So when you're doing work on the planet that has meaning, you can ask the angels to help you, and they will line up and totally help manifest what it is you're after or what you're trying to accomplish. What I um, did learn from the angelic realm is that your heart and your head has to be in alignment for the task to happen. It's fascinating. I mean, I was like, whoa, here we go. So you too can work with realms of spirit to help accomplish tasks that are of rightful living space. So um, what do you want me to do, God? I just keep going. Do you have any questions right now? Anything you didn't understand? And if we had them, yes, please. How do you know we're all what you're telling us we are? How do I know? First of all, for for uh, for first of all that you came, but also because when I go, when I, when I walk really close, there are so many tears coming from you. Do you? Can I say this? Yeah. There are a ton of tears because you're like a, a, a sadness holder. You've held so much sadness for others, your own, but you're just like, and I want you to go, can you take this, take this, take this. But you feel so deeply and you're so, so many of you are so called to be of service. And, and here on the planet, like you really, really, really are like, why aren't more people kinder? So how do I know? Because I know, because I know, because I know. I just do. Yeah. And, and also, because um, when I get really close, then I can get really close. Um, and some of you, uh, I won't walk close, are just tired. You're so tired. You're so tired. <laughs> so here's the deal. You are tired because you can be overwhelmed. Because if, if you're, you, first of all, remember when I said you have people that come up to you and they bend your ear, bend your ear, bend, me, 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 And they can be energetic vampires. Some of you have heard this, where they just drain all your energy and then you're like, well, I'm exhausted. Or it could be, I mean, some of you are, you know, you choose to be vegans or vegetarians, amen, amen, because you feel otherwise the animal's essence and that can be overwhelming. And so, but perhaps some of you also are, missing some vitamins. So there's some vitamins or adrenal deficiencies that are happening that you need to be aware of. This is, um, you, know, uh, you know, so you have to watch out for your B12s and all this kind of stuff. So when you're adapting this kind of lifestyle of what is it that I want to do and do differently, you have to really take a full body look. Because like it or not, even though you're an amazing spiritual being, you're in a physical body now. So there's some deficiencies in the room. And so I just want it to be taken care of. <laughs> so some of you I might look in the eye, and, and there's that. So the, t the, t the tiredness is, um, can be because you've been pulled in so many different directions that you're literally uh, ap apart from yourself. And that um, you know when you worry about your mother or when you worry about your child, apart, uh, you are in essence leaving and out of your body. So you're not all collected. So know that you can leave, you can uh, worry, wish them well, totally love you, totally thinking about you, great, and then whew, come back in. So uh, otherwise, yeah, you, you can, the exhaustion can come from being all scattered. You're, you're scattered. Oh my God. So grounding and centering and just in my aura. A lot of times people that are uh, empathic aren't grounded a whole lot because it's hard to be here. So anything that would ground you, yoga, or m maybe that doesn't ground you. You know, yoga nidra is a great thing too for people post-traumatic stress or um, feeling uh, is overly sensitive and just getting into your bliss body to just help because you've been through war, being born on the planet because it's overwhelming. You know, you're just like trying to, dodge all these energetic bullets. I don't mean that it to sound so awful, but I guess I do because um, you're this like little, like whoo, you know, joyful light being that came in. And when you discovered that it was not what it was supposed to be, you had to reconcile that as a small child and to try to figure out, wait, uh, uh, oh, why are you sad? Oh, I'm not sad. Oh, really? Huh? 
you know, so you went through this, like going, mom, dad, mom, why are you sad? Or white grandma, why are you sad? And then, oh, I'm not sad, I'm fine. And you're like, whoa, wait a minute. I was feeling that you're sad. Now I'm, okay, I must've gotten that wrong. So from a very young age, you got like discredited for what you intuitively knew. So what I want you to do is claim that back. This is about being in your power. To claim it back so that you are here and have purpose here. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay, so yeah. I often, in talks like this, I was like, oh no, those aren't my crystals, those are my cough drops. I, <laughs> I, have, I do clear quartz because it dispels negativity. I'm a crystal child, so I really believe in this stuff. I don't know. So um, clear quartz dispels negativity, so I often have that around. And then also, um, this is, uh, I don't remember, but it's helping me ground. Hematite for grounding, right. So here's the deal, I think that some of you have to be very aware of your astrology because planet interference, totally you need to pay attention because sometimes you can be um, off your kilt or depressed and you need just days off, you need days to recuperate. Ooh, that's really hard when you're working but you have to do whatever you can for self care. Maybe you go to bed early, maybe, because there's sometimes at nights when you're up late and stuff like that. So you can, if you believe in angels, do you believe in angels? Okay, all right, so here's the deal. So if you don't, <laughs> really? So let's say you're like, okay, I've got all of this stuff that I've picked up. I just chatted with a friend and she's dumped on me and I have this stuff and I'm like, I need to get rid of it. So I don't like to send it to the earth to be recycled because she's got enough going on already. What I do is I just imagine, some people, I used to do this when I was younger. I would be in the, you know, showering and going, I'm just letting it all wash over me and cleanse and clear and cleanse and clear. And then sometimes I would go, I'm going to just take this all up and send it up into the heavens to be recycled as awakened light coming down to people. So it's with intention. It's real. Prayer intention is real. There's actually a book called The Energy of Prayer. Um, so it's with intention, holding it up and get rid of, getting rid of it. But also, too, sometimes um, it happens more and more and so it stockpiles, but what I, spirit wants you to do is to recognize when it's happening so that it doesn't take you out in the long run. So it's in the moment that it's happening, say, you know what, I hear that you want to uh, complain about this, and I feel that actually it's a little more than I can handle, and what I would recommend is therapy, because I don't want to be the person to hear it. Literally, these are tools. What's the thing? What, look at the, um, it says, claim your boundaries, state your case with love, instruct to instill changes, stay present, choose wisely. And so that's the thing, is to, you, you've got to mark your boundaries in a new way, because otherwise um, it can be detrimental. I'm going to say this, I'm not saying it to you, but it can be detrimental to your health, because some people then end up with um, all sorts of debilitating uh, disease because they've taken on or they've held or they've um, put up with <laughs> way too much and it could be um, I'm gonna use this word I'm not saying it to you crippling like because it's just so much and then you like don't even feel like you're aware of your own surroundings or in your body because you're just like overwhelmed with all the like where did it come from so what I would start recognizing is paying attention to feeling the energy like everybody has everything that has auras so everybody has an auric field and if you take even a Reiki class or something you can sense energy but maybe you could probably sense energy anyway and sometimes you just you personally now I want to talk to you personally if that's okay with you that you need to actually stand at a distance from people because when you when it gets too close it's it's almost like noticing when is it prickly or when does it like impale you literally do you understand what I'm saying in your energy field, it feels like it just like it's jabs. And so it's like, whoa, you know what? I, can you, <laughs> I wish there were hoop skirts again. <laughs> All right, who's that lady with the hula hoop? Yeah, that you, that you need to have a safe distance from people because you pick it up, you're so vulnerable to other people's um, frenetic energy that it's, it's overwhelming. So what I would learn is to be an energy master. Actually, you all should learn to be energy masters. So sometimes you can even mess with, um, imagine pulling in my aura and how does that feel or imagine letting it out. But I think literally there's times when um, that when you, I really do, I, you need to keep your distance from some people. I, I just, that's, ex that's what I'm hearing. So when you feel like it's affecting you, um, what I want you to do is 
almost like breathe it out and breathe it up to cleanse and clear. But sometimes what Spirit's saying, it's a lesson in the moment that it's about you stating your case and your boundaries. Like, I don't want to, I can't hear that. I can't be the one to hear that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and also there's some tasks that you do that you're just not meant to do. You're just not, you're like, you know what? I know I, I said I'd help with that, but I, I actually can't. I'm sorry. No. Everybody repeat after me. Sorry, no. Sorry, no. I'm so sorry, no. Do you notice there was a period at the end of that sentence? You don't have to make an excuse. You, you don't. It's really hard. It's practice. I'm so caught up in that right now. I know. And this is why it's... Be this is why this is a spiritual practice. I know. I know, I know. So cancel, cancel. Cancel, killing me. Help me be empowered. Guidance. Help me be empowered with the word no, sorry, no. And I've even been the one to call back and go, you know, I've thought about it, and I really hate to do this. It's so, you feel like, ooh, I'm so bold. I really, you know what, I've thought about it, and it actually doesn't work for me. I'm so sorry. Good luck. I feel like I would be doing that for just about everything that's going on right now. I think you would. I think you would. I think you, yeah. Yeah, no. And then what I love to do is write it down. You know, what, what, uh, um, what should, what's for my highest good to be doing right now? Here's the deal. Because you guys see in our helpers, you can be served up to a fare thee well. I'll volunteer, I'll volunteer, I'll help, I'll see it, I'll do it. I'll save, I'll walk all the dogs, I'll do all this, I'll, you know, I'll polish all that. Sure, I'll do it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, whoa. I have this great um, magnet on my fridge a friend gave me that says, has, don't let me volunteer anymore. Something stopped me from volunteering anymore. I have my friend Eileen O'Donnell, Charlie Wolschlager in the audience. She is the illustrator for Some Dogs Talk. I adore her. And so she gives, you know, she gave me this magnet that says, don't volunteer. And I needed to have that on my fridge because I, otherwise I will serve until I'm served up. No. Say no. No. Sorry, no. Sorry, no. I can't. Yeah, go through your list because you're doing too much. Because you know what? I want you to, what I would rather for you is to walk out, go for walks. I think you really have this amazing nature connection, walk, talk, and, you know, like with nature. And so that, like, replenishes. Uh, Birdsong, huge. This, this replenishment happens. So um, here's about the anger issues, okay? So sometimes because we have so much that we've picked up, picked up, we can be really mad, We're really mad, really mad. And so the anger issue, I'm not walking up to you, the anger issue is about really with yourself for not saying no. So it's really about, you know, there's a bit of like this happened to me, that happened to me. Don't be the victim. Don't be the victim. Be the, be the, don't be the victim. Advocate? Yeah. Be be in your power, you know. This is about this is about you. Um, you were misunderstood as a child and often misguided, and so this is about stepping into who you are, the light of who you are now, going forward. And now you're the primary caregiver. You're the primary caretaker. And sometimes it really becomes the discipline of of, of a spiritual practice, of a life practice, of doing your life differently. And that is hard. But you have to do it for your own sanity and goodness. And, you know, sometimes you have to remember you do have healing hands and you can turn them on yourself. You could totally be like, oh, I need to just like, <sighs> first of all, I want to give you credit for being here, not just here tonight, but on the planet. And so I want to give you credit for like, <laughs> so like God or the universe or you're lining up for your like, oh, I'll go back. I'll go back. I'll be an empath. It'll be easy. I'll help. I'll live in love. I'll be the glowing light of love walking on the planet. And so good, good. Do it. <laughs> Do it. Do it. We need you. We need you. It's kindness. And if you're ever compelled to reach out and put your hand on a shoulder, do it. If you're ever compelled to put your, you know, um, I'm going to just do that. Sorry. Um, you know, just say, oh, you're so lovely. You know, on their, like a child's head or something. Do it. You're a conduit of light. You're a conduit of light. As the vacuum cleaner, it also comes this way. And so at the end of your day or in the moment when you're like, whoa, God, whoa, I feel like crud. What happened? Notice and uh, go, all right, I need to 
breathing, getting into my body and getting rid of everything. It's intention. I'm getting clearing, getting rid of everything. And wow, who was that? And how did I get blasted? Like, whoa. So as a vacuum cleaner, constantly cleaning, home at night shower, there was, I used to work at one of the, uh, worked at a lot of restaurants here. And so I was constantly going, okay, cleanse and clear, cleanse and clear, cleanse and clear. Where's my crystals? You know, but it was just, it was great, you know, but it was fun. And guess what else? The, the yucko doesn't always readily stick on joy. So the more joyful you are and the more you're in your happy place of fun, it can't get you. So it's just this being in that joy light because then now you're like walking around as this big glow beam of love light. So that means some of you are in the wrong job or some of you might even be in the wrong relationship. And I'll leave that to you. But I'm just saying... Your bliss is really important on the planet. Yeah, everybody, follow your bliss. Make whatever makes you happy, do it, blah, blah, blah. But yours is really important. So if it's not your primary job, it's, you may have your calling that is helpful on the, I'm going to say on, on the planet, they said it, I'm not editing. You might have your, um, your, it might be a secondary thing, a slight hobby, not a full-time hobby, but a slight hobby. But if you scatter yourself to everybody, because everybody needs you, ha, ah, every cause needs you. Every single cause needs you. But I can't, God talking, you, you, I can't have you sign up for all of them. I need you sane. I need you sane. I need you to be that child of love that you were born to be. I need you to be present in your body and on the earth. Because otherwise, <laughs> they will eat you alive. Because they're going to be like, ooh, she'll help. She's great help. And she's got great energy. But then you go home at night and you're like, whew, I'm exhausted. So I'm going to stop here. Don't ask me why. Because maybe some of you might want to come up and um, yeah, because some of you might want to come up and, uh, or should I go up to them? Yeah, <laughs> you're like, yeah, come on up, come on up, come on up. You come on from a long line, a long line of women who feel so much. And I've had angels around. <sighs> Yeah, 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 good, good. Oh, this is great. I'm going to close my eyes doing this stuff because I can't see reactions, but yeah, yeah. Do you have like there's like a, like a, like I, I, I like almost see like a, like a quilt or a, some kind of a something from that's a generational thing, that's a stitched thing? What I is that? Lots of things like that. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Those even still have that energy. So listen, there's times. Well, the property I'm on, I've been on for 300 years. Oh, <laughs> wow, wow. So this is where, you know, when, remember when I said um, when you, uh, you know, prayer works? This is when if there's ever any, you know, you've got this life sorted. I know you do. <laughs> but I'm going to just say this You're anyway. Okay, good. V validation. But there's times when I feel like you just gather up some bits and you go, okay, everybody, this is, I need your help now. And they're like, you got it. We'll, we'll help you. Anything. You, you don't even know the miracles. So because you haven't asked enough, you need to ask more to say, I need your help. It's good things you ask for. It's not like you, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all good. Oh, I adore you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I need to take off my shoes. I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Oh, I'm like really like poof. Okay. So this one I go, okay, let's go around. Oof. So <laughs> I'm going to keep my eyes closed. You just tell me if I'm bumping into you and say go away if you don't want to hear it. <laughs> but here's the deal with these things when I do these round things. Wow, wow, man, wow. When I do these round things, it could also have to do with somebody else. And so spirit does this thing where it's both two of you. So you have traveled, and, and I'm just going to, I don't edit, so if you get it, get great. If you don't get it, sorry. So you have traveled in many forms, in many ways, through many lifetimes here to be of service. You are an energy master. So this is about, um, this is about noticing that you have done countless lifetimes. I'm also hearing Govinda. So there's like this Hindu connection, too, of knowing that different asanas and postures 
that, oh, you get it too, that different asanas and postures actually direct energy so that you know this innately so that when you're compelled to actually do this kind of movement and touching, this is not, this is real. Like when you were a child, you knew this, like you could zap energy out your hands and thinking it was futuristic, but actually you do it all the time and it's very real. And so you're being thanked for coming back for this great service that you've done and countless treasures, countless treasures of lifetime. Whew. Very cool, don't say a word. I'm so hot, my, my feet are sweating. But I, I definitely, I would, I'm like, oh, I want to open my, Anthony, tell me if I run into anything. <laughs> oh my God, okay, whoa, thought I was going that way. Actually, I am, I am. Your auric field is like, <sighs> wow, wow. You got big plans. So you come in with, and you're not the only one in the room, but I'm hearing this now. Come in with, uh, I came in with a purpose. I'm a servant. I'm also a public servant. Came in with a purpose. Came in with a greater calling to do a greater good. So I um, am being directed to tell you this. I might actually direct channel. How dare you belittle what it is you do, for you know not the cause of your efforts, nor the frequency of how much they change those that go before you. You are in high demand, for what you do helps bring on countless levels to this planet variable change in very realms of where we dwell and countless ones beyond. Do not belittle the service that you do, for you know not the effort and effervescence that moves beyond it. So you are actually being reminded that what you think is little is actually larger than you can ever imagine. So this is, um, <laughs> this is also, this is also, is that right? I'm like, yeah, this is right. This is also like superwoman cape or superman cape. So this is like, you know, the cool thing about Superman or Superwoman was this, we never knew all the things that this person did, and we never really knew who it was, although we, the viewer of the show, saw who it was. But this is about the behind-the-scenes crusades that you're up to, and this is like, oh my gosh, but all have, you know, they, they do have reason, but it, it does feel like that you're like a, you know, I'm going to just say this word, it's so weird, crime fighter on your own. And so it just feels like... Um, it, that, that sometimes it's all a bit much. And so, you know, put on the mask, don the mask, don the cape, and get to it. So, uh, yeah. But this is, you've, you've come from way beyond to, to help bring this. So this is like a master of decision making and a, a reputable person and someone that actually can do a lot more troubleshooting that is allowed. So there's a bit of frustration of not being able to get your way in all accounts but I wish more people would listen to you. So, so Spirit says, in those situations where there's frustration, is call on us at any time. So what we can do, y'all making notes on this one, is we can ask our angels, listen, they'll only do this if it actually is for the highest good. You can ask your angels to talk to their angels to say, bring them to a li little different awareness to what I'm trying to accomplish so they'll be on board. Or what do I need to know so that to bring them on board? Because what I'm coming up with is for the highest good. And the angels will do it. They're like, yep, we're on it. But we're gonna, and then all of a sudden they'll go, ooh, I had a change of heart. So, okay, I'm going to pull back. Oof. Oh, my God. Okay, so here's the deal. I'm not going, I'm not going anywhere, but I'm... So sometimes um, we carry energy or we pick up energy that's, uh, that we carry around for ages with us, and it's... And I'm going to... I'm going to... Don't know, you don't know where this is coming from, so I'm just going to say it. So this could be to anybody in this room. But sometimes when other people, like empaths also p pick up sexual energy. Like if people are, there's a mucky sexual energy thing that can happen. And so this is about really being on guard 
when you're picking up other people's sexual energy too because it can be very invasive. And so realizing when it's like, I, you know, you're feeling like, oh, I got to just, I feel dirty. And so sometimes that is actually real because you've picked up their, you know, their cruddiness, stuff like that. And so this is about, I think that sometimes this is about going to, uh, this is, okay, I'm going to just say it like this. Give me the words because I need better words. This is about, oh, God, you're all grown-ups. I'm so glad I don't have kids. This is about feeling as if you've been raped even though you physically have not been penetrated. This is what happened to you. So this is time, high time, that you get this sorted. Therapy and guidance can help, but with the right therapist. They need to understand the stress of this situation is because it feels as if you were because you had to live with this groping sensation your whole life. And so even though he, this, it feels like man, never penetrated you, you were still molested because you were energetically molested. Take that. Whew. Oh, man. And so then I shake it off, and then I go, wow, thanks. Good. Light and love. Light and love. Okay. Can I open my I'm going to open my eyes. Whoa, not the way I thought I was facing. That's so wild. <laughs> Time check. Five minutes. I told her I wouldn't. Okay, you need to dance more over here. Namo, namo. So I, <laughs> yeah, you need to dance more. So Namo is I bow to you, it's Hindu, and there's a lot of energy that you pick up. So the best thing that you could do is actually move your body and dance and let it go anyway. So you don't even need music, but you just need to move because otherwise what happens is you pick it up and you carry it and it gets stuck in your body. So there's aches and pains that are long awaited to go. You know, there's these things called nadis, like in lifetimes, we pick up this stuff from other incarnations, but you're like a street sweeper. So you pick it up from the streets. So this is about you going home and going, I am gonna just move, close your eyes and just move. And this is stuff that like, you would never think you could move this way. And you're just, you know, so <laughs> I wouldn't do this in public or on film, but, <laughs> but you need to do that. You need to get your feet off that you know and just like move and you'll be amazed to do this for 40 days and do it for the rest of your life really but promise to do it for 40 days <sighs> that's because I'm really hot Ooh, I love you whoever's over here I love you and I hope I'm walking to somebody so I love you because you're just so good you love people so <laughs> So, ah, so, oh man, that's all. <laughs> you know, this is a good person. This is a good person that sees the good in others and just like rises above. This is, I'd like to be this, I'd like to emulate this person. Sometimes I'm like, why is that guy, practice what you preach, Constance. You're like, oh man, you give them the benefit of the doubt. Oh man, they just didn't get it, whatever. You know, I'm like, whoa, right? Um, a lot of times you thwart that energy, so this is very good. You know, this is very good. So you just don't let things bother you. Different than zoning out people. Zoning out, you think it does bother you, and then you zone out or you whatever out. God help us and God help you all with this new uh, marijuana thing because you get contact highs really easily. So, but you, you're like... It rolls off my back. So I honor that, and that is, that's a really good way to live. Because if, if, really, if you can't really make a change, then you do need to let it roll off your back. Because you you're not responsible for everyone. I left my mother a postcard, and she put it up on the fridge. It was that dear mom, whatever, dear name, insert name here. Um, you're not responsible for everyone and everything. That's my job, God. So OK, this is it. And then I'm going to end on this, I think. So because you are all from that place of lightness and that place that is working with the angels and you have the angel stories or you could have the angel stories compelled to tune in. You do have to always remember that you are of love. Listen, I know everybody's of love. I know that, I get that. But I'm just saying that's your innate presence and so always returning to that will make you in a more comfortable space. It's not necessarily love of them, 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 them. It's love. And that is first and foremost with you. Because when you can go, you know what? Why am I selling myself short? Why am I selling myself out? Why am I doing too much? 
what is it? And it's like, oh, wait, 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 come back. What? I need to love myself enough to care for myself first. Trust me, you are not selfish people. So this is no big deal. This is about you re reordering your life to go, wait, I'm, something doesn't feel right. I'm not happy. Who do I need to talk to? I'm not, it's not about a blame thing. It's like, listen, this is, I'm going through this. Let's sort it out. I'm having these feelings. Let's talk about it, whatever. Or no, I'm, I, I'm sorry, I can't hang out with you. <laughs> Sorry, I, yeah, no, I have enough friends. I actually said that to someone. I'm sorry, I have so many friends right now. It's so not true. If you knew me, I don't have a lot of friends, but I, can't, I like it that way. Mm, I just have to, because it's too much, you know? I'm also a mom, so I'm pulled. So tonight, I hope, today, was about you understanding, recognizing more of who you are, um, and taking care of that in a graceful state, because you are, uh, um, you are that, and I'm grateful that you're here tonight and on the planet. Um, bringing your harmony and your love and your incredibly vulnerable, sensitive self. So I'm going to end there. Thank you. <laughs>